And my viewers and subscribers, what a uh, one, a blessed and wonderful uh, Thursday morning to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So in the morning, I'm a peeps, I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So watch this now, my peeps, we are going to kick it off in the morning with an incident that took place on Wednesday, October 30 in the parish of St. Anne. In a community known as Eltham in Ocherios. Now the man presently on your screen has since been identified as Sean Jemison, but more popularly known in the streets of Ochi as Shanti, a 48 year old singer said to be a man that sounds pretty much a lot like Sanchez. But the thing about Sean Jemison, aka Shanti, he said to be of unsound mind. It is stated that when he was way younger, his friends and him were smoking and it is said that somebody gave him season spliff. What is meant by that is that word on the street have it that them sprinkle a little bit of the white lady or some may say they put a lizard tail in and the spliff and him smoke it and it just chip him head. So him not too collective upstairs. So him just walk around, sing, and do film like a thing and you don't know some people say that him a nine more time because him just sing loud of them years more time a morning time when time them in a them better try for all of one sleep so we go on and know is that sometime around 7 p.m on wednesday october 30 he was attacked in an unfinished house where he sometimes resides by his lonesome it is said that three criminal elements went to that location and told him to get out of the empty house 
It is said that he refused. He was dragged outside of the house. He ran back in. And it was where the criminal elements beat him to a pulp. It is said that police was called to the scene who later responded to a report that an injured man was seen laying along the roadway. It is said that after his severe beating, he managed to walk from the building in which he was and fell along the roadside. And that is where the police assisted him from and took him to the Sentence Bay General Public Hospital where he was admitted in serious condition. He subsequently succumbed to his injuries. So as a result, that case was upgraded from assault occasioning grievous bodily harm to that of a fatality. Now the Ocherius Criminal Investigation Branch is probing that incident, but the family members and friends have yet to get any concrete evidence as to who and why as it relates to the fatality of their loved ones. So on the spot news media decided to make some checks of his own to see if we could uncover what really took place as it relates to the fatality of that mentally challenged man. Now what I've heard so far in the streets is that he had become finger fearing, meaning that he became a thief and was a menace to the community. So some persons are saying that could have been the main reason behind his fatal beating. Now regardless of the circumstances, I'm going to deal with a man a certain type of way. And if a man a thief, you better want to hold him time up and let the police them come deal with it instead of deal with him in such a fashion. Because he has family members, people who love and care for him. Even though some persons are saying that if them did love and care for him that much, they would have him around them and not having him walking all over the streets just doing as he pleases. Now, residents from Eltham in Ocherius, if you don't know who carry out a fatal beating of the man, reach out to the Ocherius police station and give them the necessary information. Because the family members are refuting the claims that he was a thief and he did not deserve to lose his life in such a fashion. So anyone knowing the persons who carried out that fatal beating, if you don't feel comfortable speaking to the police as always, you can reach out to on the spot news media or any like-minded vlogger, give us the information and we will most definitely pass it on to the relevant authorities who can make effective change. Now, the next incident that we're going to talk about is most definitely similar to the one that I just made mention of. But this one took place over there in the western section of the island in the Westmoreland Police Division to be more specific. Where a woman who was allegedly chopped up with a machete during an altercation about three days ago has succumbed to her injuries now the female in question is presently on your screen and she has since been identified as 29 year old sydney martin said to be a travel agent of turo in west milan now what going on is that she got to one party and had a little bit too much to drink it is said that on her way back from the party she stopped at a house where a car was parked and used a stone to start licking the car. The owner of that motor vehicle has since been identified as a 42 year old Dwayne Argin, said to be a businessman from the community. Now it is said that they had a verbal turn physical altercation. It took place sometime around 3.30 a.m. on Sunday. It is said that the altercation reportedly developed between both parties and the man was armed with a machete and a tussle between both quickly developed into a fight. It was at this point that the machete was used to inflict several wounds all over the deceased female's body. It is said that the female fell to the ground 
before someone rushed to her assistance and pulled the machete wielding man off her. She was however rushed to the Savannah Lamar General Public Hospital in a bid to save her life where she was admitted in serious condition and subsequently transferred to the Cornwall Regional Hospital in St. James. She succumbed to her injuries on Tuesday. The suspect who had reportedly fled the scene later turned himself over to the police where he was charged with wounding with intent. Now that charge has been upgraded to the fatal chappings of the now deceased female presently on your screen identified as Sydney Martin. Now people just need to understand that hey conflict resolution should definitely be a thing in Jamaica because we too quick we take somebody life for the least of things whilst I do understand the man was disgruntled that she used a stone for a mash up in vehicle when work so hard for buy but what is a life in comparison to a car? If she was held on to tied up because she was so drunk and calling the police then a lawsuit could have been set in place. She's a travel agent so possibly she could have afforded to pay back for the car, juke out the car, even change whatsoever parts of the car that was damaged and the car would be good as new. And of course, she too would be alive and well today. Now, I'm asking the man that carried out that brutal chopping. It makes sense to you right now because the car is still out of road, all good, ready to be driven by its next owner whilst the female in question is presently on a block of ice and you are behind bars make it make sense no i'm pretty sure you cannot make that make sense because it don't sometimes we have to resort to more peaceful means of settling our disputes than quickly escalating things that can become fatal boy may i tell you my peeps the thing rough now for the main story my peeps from a year the old dirty kind of boy and them ring out in the man in your nose see another criminal element bite the dust yeah man now the criminal element in question is definitely no stranger to you the regular members of chan public no stranger to the police and definitely no stranger to those who have been tuning into on the spot news media's platform now the criminal element present on your screen has since been identified as Clive Larson Jr. otherwise known as Greedy. A top tier criminal element from the infamous KDF gang in the Mount Salem community in the parish of St. James. In recent times I've covered several vlogs on this criminal element and one of the most recent vlog I covered is this one presently on your screen where we could visibly see Clive Larson Jr. aka Greedy leading his troops through the alleys, the turns and curves of the Mount Salem community after they committed a fatal knockings and clappings of a 52 year old Mason in the community of Mount Salem. They fled the scene in a waiting motor car. I covered that vlog I think in two or three different parts extensively so for those who have missed out on that please go over and watch them so you can get a better understanding of what i'm speaking about now clive larson aka greedy is also the brother of the notorious leader of the kdf gang known as brokan so this criminal element most definitely has been on the radar of the police for quite some time as one of St. James' most wanted criminal elements. He has been involved in several, when I mean several, I mean whole heap of fatal knockings and clappings. Some he carried out himself and some he instigated to being carried out. Now this criminal element has been on the run for years. He lost his father because of his doing and also his brother's doing. 
His brother Brokan is presently in Haiti awaiting extradition to be returned to Jamaica to face criminal charges. Now one of the most recent vlogs I did involving this criminal element known as Greedy involved some of his other cronies, one of which is said to be among the criminal elements that was taken out by the security forces last night. We are talking about this criminal element here, presently on your screen identified as Big Bones. Now, unconfirmed reports suggest that Greedy was taken out with two of his cronies and Big Bones is among those cronies. Now I'm going to play a video clipping for you. I covered a vlog involving him already, but I'm going to play that video clipping for you so you can see who Big Bones is and exactly what Big Bones represents. Now watch. Some boy feel like he can't hold a man. No, I can't hold a man. In vid, wanna like that man boy just dead. I'm looking at him. I'm telling my mind. Stop him. No, I can't hold him. What you Anyway, man. Rental them active, man. It's been a while now, one is a big bumps, man. We out here, man. One team, man. One three, man. Here. Go to bag of money, man. We know we're trouble without money, man. All right. Give me the answer, man. Don't well, as Big Bones clearly stated, you know, see a long time people are seen or hear about Big Bunks. Well, uh, Big Bunks, uh, last Bunks, it will be bouncing from the block of ice that you're presently laying on into a casket. So the last time anybody I go see you, that is if I know one close casket treatment, Officer Yeman Pick and Team delivered unto you and your criminal element boss known as Greedy. Is that your funeral? Yeah, man. So right now, Greedy belly full. But him full up a can. Boy, may I tell you. The thing rough. Now this just goes to show you know, you would say, you would say, the life where you live, it always come back, come on to you. And it was just a matter of time. Because a long time greedy up on the run, you know. Good little while right you now. Now him time run out. And him go home to meet the man with them worship when time them a walk. Them up ya. <laughs> yeah man. So what you know, there's a third person in that fatal confrontation with the police who has not yet been identified. So on the spot, we'll most definitely seek to find out who that third person is and update you in subsequent newscast. So the fatal knockings and clappings of Big Bones and Clive Larson Jr. aka Greedy and the other unidentified man took place in the community of Cove in the parish of Hanover. Now it is said that upon the approach of Officer Yeman Pick and Team, the criminal elements fired on the officers who took evasive action, of course, as they were taught to do at the agriculture school in Portland, where they were properly trained for plant can in a dirty boy tomok. So they make sure, say, the one known as Greedy, they make sure, say, he hungers no more, as them full up in belly with pure can. Yeah, man. And Big Bone's head bunks off him body, lone can to him skin, same way. Now, three criminal elements are now among the dead, no longer among the land of the living. Shut eye control and settings was the order of the day. Now, the officers also retrieved two illegal firearms from their lifeless bodies. Now, Montego Bay, St. James, the Salem community, especially so, is now a safer space for its residents. So another decent spot of work again 
by the squad of them. Yeah, man. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.